In this video, I'm going to show you how to airbrush a basic silhouette mountain range. It's perfect for beginners. Let's get into it right now. So I'm going to start off with some Trident Yellow. I'm going to switch on the extraction fan. And what I'm going to do is just covering the entire canvas with that yellow. Keep a 50-50 overlap. Build it up nice and lightly. I'm just using the PS289, the GSI Krios. This one runs the 0.3mm needle nozzle setup, but it works well enough just to get that yellow on there and give us a nice bright base to start with for this mountain range. So let each coat dry for a couple of minutes before you coat back over it. You can see on this edge here, I've got some fingerprints. I'm not too concerned about it. By the time I finish my design, that'll disappear. So now using the red, I'm gonna do the same thing, just coat back over it, 50-50 overlap, but I'm gonna work down to only around about here or even slightly less. So I'm gonna do it like a graduated tone. So starting off heavier at the top, I'll flick that extraction fan on again. And they're not as heavy as I'm coming down. You can see I'm getting further away. I'll pop a link to a video showing you how to do the graduated tones in the description below so that you can master the graduated tone before you attempt this. And then what I'm gonna do is just freehand in a little bit of detail into the background simulating kind of a cloudy backdrop. And you can see this is helping to get rid of these marks as well. They don't need much, it's just to suggest that there's something there. Next tone is red violet. You can also use regular violet for this. It doesn't have to necessarily be red violet. I just thought it might blend a little bit nicer with the reddish base. Just darkening off the top. Now, I'm not going to come down as far this time. Still sort of blending it though. And the other thing I'm going to do is just get a bit of shadow. To shade the clouds a little bit. You can also add in some new ones. Again, you could just use this as a guide, especially if you're a little bit more advanced with the airbrush. You can use this concept and make it your own. I just want this one to be nice and easy so that someone who's just starting out can have a go. Now to create the mountains using some black and you need a sheet long enough to cover your canvas or you can use say masking tape or another good one would be application tape which is this stuff here it's what you find at a sign supply shop they use this to stick onto vinyl stickers so that you can stick them on the surface but i understand not everyone has or wants to go and purchase something so i'm going to show you using paper it's going to be a little bit more difficult because i've got to keep it flat when i'm spraying the black but i'll show you how to fix up any mistakes if there are any bits of overspray that travel underneath. So you get your sheet of paper and we're just gonna rip it in the shape of a mountain range, as uneven as you can. 
and then you can decide which side you wish to use. Using a bit of tape, snap off some pieces and we're just going to tape it into place. I think about there is pretty good. And now you can still tweak it if you wish. So I might just grab this piece here and peel that up and the rest I'm reasonably happy with. Then I want to protect this part from overspray even though I'm spraying down here it's always good to be safe so just using my scrap piece that's left over I'll just run that along here even block up these and I'm going to utilize that and just tape around there even if I don't want to run on that edge it's just going to help to keep it pressed down you could use a spray adhesive which would help to adhere it but on a flat surface if you're doing say a aluminium composite panel or even like an MDF board where it is flatter it's going to be easier to keep this pressed down now I just need to be cautious so and angling the airbrush down to help keep that paper template in place and go nice and heavy on that leading edge because the rest you can always do freehand if necessary. Just do it bit by bit. And I'd run your black a bit thicker for this as well so that you get really good coverage. I'm using the Trident Opaque Black which covers really quickly and nicely but whatever brand you're using will be fine. I'd probably stay away from, say, a transparent black. Stick with something that is opaque, so you get that really quick coverage. Blending down now. So as you blend down, hold with your fingers once again. And you can see I'm angling that airbrush so that the air is helping to keep that paper pressed down flat. Moving along, and then once I've got into what I call the safe zone, then I can do the rest freehand. Okay, reasonably safe. I'm still angling that airbrush, okay? So I'm trying to make my overspray go down to this bottom section where it doesn't matter because I'm gonna cover that anyway. I don't wanna risk sort of going like this. Even when I'm here, I don't wanna be spraying like this because overspray could travel underneath. All right, so always angle your airbrush away from your template edge. Just hit that edge a little bit, fix up the bottom. Let that dry off. Okay, now that the black is dry, go ahead and unmask it and see how the template went. Now, I could leave it like that, and by all means, if you're happy with that, you can clean up a few edges with the black, but you could leave your artwork like that. I wanna just add in a few highlights and add some texture to this silhouetted mountain range. So for that, I'm gonna use a bit of white. Usually I would utilize a texture template because I want this video to be appealing for beginners and people that don't have a lot of the airbrush equipment. I'm gonna just utilize a paper towel and I'll show you how to create some effects with that. So just tear it up into all different sort of shapes. So you've got some small strips, some like that. And then using the white, it's going to come in and build a bit of texture. You can move the paper towel template as you're doing it. You can do some freehand as well. Just mix it up and see I'm getting some of that texture in nice and uneven. Because the white's opaque, you can easily work back over certain areas. Don't worry, I'm going to tone this down. Just adds a bit more interest to the mountain range. Now some freehand. So again, if you are a beginner, this might be a bit more difficult, this step. So just do what you can. Just keep in mind, uneven is the key. 
And if you don't like something, you can always go back over it with the black. I deliberately haven't washed out my black so that I can clean this up. You can see how that's definitely giving it a little bit more character and making it look more like a mountain range. Now utilizing a transparent yellow, this is Illustration Yellow by Createx. I'm gonna spray back over that white section. So just dust over it. Now back to the black for final cleanup and this will get rid of any of the overspray and you can also tweak things now if you're not happy with something. Put in extra detail if you wish. You can see it's made a big difference putting that yellow in there. It's just given those mountains some life. You can come back in and clean these edges up. I'll give you a bit of a sample along here, just up nice and close. And retrace the edge. And that's going to clean it up. I'm not going to bother doing it right around. I think for a beginner's exercise, it looks fine. So have a play around with it yourself. See what you come up with. So to continue your learning, be sure to check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.